Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'll be going over some updated information on 95L, soon to be Hurricane Lee. Right now, as of 4.45 p.m., we are sitting at 1,010 millibars, moving generally west. And once again, we are still west of the Cabo Verde Islands. And if we take a look at the hurricane guidance model tracks, we can see over the next few days, it's generally going to move in a west-northwest direction. But then the confidence starts to fall off after hours 120 and 144. Understandably so, that's definitely five, seven days out. And that's when the spread starts to widen. <coughs> Excuse me. It could either go straight out more out to sea, moving more north than west, or it could move more west than north, as shown by some models. But I generally think, as of this time, I think it would generally take a track southwest of Bermuda as it is time that's the favorable pattern for this storm to go through and if we go through the ensembles here we can see that the GFS ensembles do rather agree with that as you can see we have a bulk of them south of this black line and we also have another bulk of them on the eastern side of that notice in this area there's a lot more ensemble members going down in this way Generally, that is the favorite path as of now. And if we go to, if you want to take a look at the Canadian ensembles, even though there's not that many, once again, we're split either some heading towards the coast here or some that just go safely out to sea. Sadly, maybe impacting Bermuda a bit here, according to the Canadian ensemble. If we take a look at the GFS, as if you watched my video yesterday, you would have seen that it had a massive storm track generally like this. Stalled out, went towards the Carolinas, and had an East Coast Special Storm written all over it. Now, it has changed a little bit from that run. Notice how it is going to get a lot quicker, faster. This is 2 a.m. Saturday morning. It's already at 9.45 millibars. It's not even past the islands yet. And if we go back to... The run that I was just talking about, it was 18Z, just let me put the general location of that storm right there. If we go back to the 18Z here, notice how it's a lot more southwest and it is definitely a lot more weaker. If we go back to our model run right now, in advance, it still generally moves in west-northwest fashion, but once again, it's stronger and it's not as far south. Go back to the 18Z here, it's not as far south. So that tells me that the impacts of the East Coast getting hit is less likely as of now. But once again, this is several days out, so anything can change. Once again, how we're talking about how the trough disappeared in the model runs. Look what's back. The trough is now back, as you can see here. And we have ridging out in the middle of the Atlantic. If we continue this, you can see it wants to make a track towards the coast, but then the trough kicks it out. And the high pressures here so the weakness is right in between the two and as you can see by the gfs it goes right in between the two now it is still close call it is still going to impact at least if this track is right maine and southeastern canada but if we go back to the 16z uh not 16z 6z run here you can see it actually did make landfall in the northeast like, it's, like I said, this is the 12Z. It's all the way up here. We'll start marking them so we can see how quickly they shift. Let's go back to the 6Z. This is the 6Z making landfall just on the eastern tip of Long Island. And back one more run. You can see it's over here. And we'll go one more run just to show you how vulnerable it is. It's, it's all the way out here. So, these model runs obviously keep moving around, bouncing around, and that's well expected. This storm is almost 300 hours out, so I'm not surprised this keeps happening. But if you want to take a look on the upper air and show why it's doing this, move it to the storm here. We have our ridging still up in Canada. We have our trough back over here. Now, if the trough wants to become a negative tilt and the storm is still over here, then we're going to have to look for maybe it's starting to curve back. But as of now, we don't see that happening. No models have that happening as of now, unless you run 6Z 
you can see it does happen here. It gets trapped under. It just it gets trapped under the trough in the ridge. The ridge is sitting out here. It expands all the way into the eastern part of Canada, forcing it to go into there. But if we go to the run now, we could see the trough does speed up a little bit and was able to kick it out. And the ridge was a little bit weaker. Now, if I show you what the Canadian is, not, uh, not the Canadian, the European is doing, take this with a grain of salt because uh, it goes absolutely wild with this thing. As you can see here, yeah, it's a little weaker than what the Europe, uh, GFS has it here, but all of a sudden, the next three hours it has it going from 961 964 943 that is rapid intensification so it goes from 964 to 943 21 millibar drop in three hours if you want to believe the european and then it just breaks all <laughs> records let me just zoom in a little bit on this if i can no i can't zoom in on that but you get the point. 917, that is a major hurricane category 5. Thankfully, it takes a track like this. It avoids the Caribbean and quickly goes out to sea. As shown right here. I believe it would clip Bermuda if this were to be the case. But if you want to take last night's run and compare it to this, you can notice how it's pretty much the same thing. But it's just a lot stronger, this run. So, if we take one last look at the up air and explain why it's doing this before we say goodnight to this storm for today. Notice, let me just get these L's out of here. Notice the storm down here, once again, this is our storm. Low pressure ridge that expands all the way up north. Trough again. And if we advance this, you can see the storm is advancing towards the United States and then you have another trough come down through the United States and eventually wants to kick it out. Notice how different it is from the uh, GFS. We'll just mark it up real quick. We have a trough coming down, a ridge all the way out here, and here's a low pressure system. If you want to compare this to the GFS real quick, Trough is delayed and it's all the way back in the Midwest. Our ridge is up into Canada here, so that blocks it from going straight out to sea and makes it want to come towards New England a little bit closer. So, this is definitely something to monitor. And if we take one look at the Canadian just for giggles here, it, it's pretty much a mix of the two, but it has a very strong trough in the Midwest and a little bit of a ridge out here so i think it would take it out to sea i haven't looked at the canadian yet but let me see what it does yeah it would eventually take it out to sea it looks like unless this trough wants to get a negative tilt does it get a negative tilt okay so this run would be interesting because it's almost on a negative tilt right now it's neutral to slightly negative so if and we have a ridge okay so we have a ridge out here so I think the GIF, uh, I'm sorry, the Canadian would try to go out to sea, but then get pulled back in because this thing is a vigorous trough and it would bring it back towards the coast. So, what are my thoughts after seeing all the models today? If you're in this area, and I actually, that's, that's too shallow. If you're in this area, I would keep a close eye on this. Obviously, it's still 10, 12 days out. Anything could change. This could be gone next run, or it could be even sharper and stronger. Just keep an eye out for this. Worst comes to worst, it does end up happening, but you'll be well prepared by me, and I'll be updating you guys almost every day with this storm. So yeah, check back in every day. Make sure to like and subscribe for more.